Newcastle disease. Newcastle disease is one of the deadliest diseases in the world that can affect your poultry farm. Because you know, for example, if you have 10,000 chicken on your farm, do you know how much you can lose when you lose all that chicken to a Newcastle disease? Newcastle disease can have a mortality rate of up to 100%. That, me that means that it will clear off your stock. For example, I've said if you have 10,000 layers, if, you ha if all those chickens get attacked by Newcastle, you will have a loss of 10 million Kenyan shillings. If you translate that to United States dollars, that will be 100,000 US dollars that you have lost if your chicken get attacked by Newcastle disease. So, on this video, I'm going to explain very well the process and the time that you have to take so as you will be able to make your chicken not be attacked by the Newcastle disease. Okay? So the first thing, I will tell you the signs and symptoms of the Newcastle disease. The second thing, I will tell you about the prevention. The third thing, I will tell you about my story, whereby I went a loss of 374,000 Kenyan shillings, which is translated to 3740, 3740 US dollars total loss that I got when I was starting my poultry farm because my chicken were attacked by this menacing disease known as Newcastle disease. Guys, stick around so that I can show you this video. Okay, guys, so before you, we, we continue with our video about the Newcastle disease, this video is sponsored by Henchik poultry farm. Henchik poultry farm is one of the best upcoming poultry farms that is found in Kenya and it has sponsored this video. It usually deals with the sale of incubators, it usually deals with the sale of chicken cages, we usually sell day old chicks at only one dollar, that is a hundred Kenyan shillings. We have incubators from 64 eggs up to 10, 56 eggs, even we can have up to 5,000 if you are in need, you can get it on order. We also do the installation of the incubators and the installation of the cages guys we also sell brooded chicks and mature chicken for meat at three months old guys what are you waiting for order day old chicks from henchick poultry farm we are located in bungoma but we do countrywide deliveries our contacts are 0790122478 our contacts are 0790122478 premium chicken hen chick poultry farm so what are the signs of newcastle disease the first sign that you'll experience is this will have loss of appetite on your flock the second thing you'll have sneezing it usually has this very funny sneezing sound like achoo! i think i've ever heard something like that it doesn't sneeze like it has like this an elongated sneeze that is another sign of newcastle another thing is gasping i will explain further Another thing for the laying hens, they will have low egg production and also they will have deformed eggs and also soft shelled eggs in the laying hen. And this is the main reason that you usually have on your flock. There is also another symptom which is very dominant but it usually, has, it usually happens in the advanced stages. We have the green poop and also we have the nervous sign. The nervous system sign. The nervous system sign are the ones like those ones which usually, usually have a chicken whereby it it tries to pretend it twisted its neck then it usually runs around like as if it, it has get, gotten mad that is one sign of a newcastle disease and the problem with the newcastle disease don't confuse it with soft brain disease that usually happens in the chicks a chick between one day to one month a chick between one day to one month it can have that twisted neck and run around like a mad chick that is called soft brain disease and that is usually caused because of lack of something known as vitamin e a chick between one day to one month usually has a very high immunity unlike a bigger chicken that's why you, you even you can see that's why <coughs> excuse me that's why we can we usually also vaccinate our our chicks mostly when they are still very young okay because their immunity is kind of hardy okay not forgetting this symptom this symptom of watery eyes in your chicken if you have chicken that experience the watery eyes 
and they are not laying eggs and also they usually have loss of weight in their in the flock Make, that can be a sign of newcastle disease so we'll head straight to the prevention of the newcastle disease so one of the prevention of, of newcastle disease is biosecurity on your farm as you can see on my farm here we have these wire mesh that usually it helps on our farm whereby we can have the poop go directly on the ground if only one chicken is infected it cannot affect other chicken as you can see the poop is down here and the chicken are up here so this is one of the better ways that you can use to prevent the newcastle disease this means only one chicken gets infected it cannot affect the whole flock you can see that okay so so the second part the second prevention is vaccination vaccinating your chicken this is a very important and essential thing that you should do to your chicken as a poultry farmer don't evade i have a video about aloe vera which i think i thank you guys it is over 200 case views and most of the viewers were asking me can i not vaccinate my chicken after i have given them aloe vera so today here i am i'm going to explain to you the importance of vaccinating your chicken okay when a chicken is attacked by a virus the virus usually attacks the cells okay in the chicken we have a cell a cell is important for many things metabolism reproduction and other functions like breathing many functions in the body so when a virus attacks the chicken it goes and atta it attaches itself on the cell receptors of that cell when it attaches the itself on the cell receptors of that cell it burns through the cell receptors of that cell of the cell wall the cell membrane and then it destroys that cell if it destroys that cell for example if it destroys a cell of breathing hereby you will have a chicken gasping for air now you get it that is when a virus breaks through and this can be solved by giving your chicken a vaccine we have two types of vaccine we have the live vaccine and we have the killed vaccine but today i'm going to talk about the live vaccine and how the live vaccine is made in the lab okay this is a secret okay so the first thing when a live vaccine is made what they usually do if for an example a dog has a virus these guys usually come the scientists with the white lab coats they come they take the virus from the dog then they take it to the lab since that virus is adapted to the growing all on, on the organism which the organism is the dog it can be taken into the lab and be put to grow in a chick embryo so because it is not adapted to the chick embryo most of those viruses won't be able to adapt and try to penetrate the chick embryo cells so that it can infect that chick embryo that is being grown in the lab so what it does only for those the strong ones the strong viruses that usually like they are affected those they usually try and penetrate that chick embryo in the lab so when that virus penetrates the chick embryo in the lab it tries to modify itself genetically over and over and over and over so it becomes adaptable to the chick embryo of which it is found in the lab it has become weaker to attacking the dog because it has adapted itself only to be able to survive in the chick embryo so what they these scientists usually do they take that virus that has that has been grown in the lab which for me as i can see it it has been weakened in a way because it has been made to adapt in the chick embryo okay so when it is taken from the lab then it is reintroduced to the body of the dog what it will do is that the, it will give time for the body immune system to learn the characteristics of that virus because it is in it, its weak form so when it is in it, it's in its weak form it will take time for it to strike like one time so it will give time for the body to understand the virus and release the appropriate antibodies so these antibodies work in this way so when that virus tries to come and attack instead of that virus coming and attaching itself on the cell receptors so that it can destroy that cells that is important for those many things that i've said these antibodies offer themselves up 
that those viruses come and attach themselves on the antibodies so this virus won't be able to attack that chicken you can get the point so make sure guys you vaccinate your chicken and for example as you can see for example if we never had i think medicine uh, has really revamped up our world for an example do you know malaria attacks 247 million people in the world and only 630,000 okay i cannot say only but that is only 0.255% of the total population that usually attacks that usually end up dying 630,000 out of 247 million imagine that okay so guys this is the live vaccine the newcastle vaccine uh, as you can see we are unboxing it and that bottle we have that iced water so that it can keep it cool as you can see yes that is iced water and that is the vaccine in it so you can remove the vaccine we can see it that is the live vaccine let me see which strain it is so this one is a lasota as you can see this is the lasota strain for 100 doses uh, is made by this company known as vad world this is a lethogenic vaccine there are very various vaccines we have lethogenic mesogenic and uh, velogenic there are there are four kinds of newcastle vaccine and this one as you can see this one is the f strain the newcastle vaccine f strain this one is for 100 doses but it is a live vaccine so, as you can see it has been stored in water so for the live vaccine our chicken currently are 21 to 28 days they will use three liters of water to dilute that vaccine so that we can give our chicken three liters of water yes so we, we will mix the vaccine this one we are using water instead of giving it directly to the chicken via eye drop or nose drop so these we are using the syringes and we are extracting the vaccine from that and we are using it to give to our chicken so that make sure you if you are you are you're making your vaccine make sure that you are put into water that can only be completed by the chicken in like three hours okay in three hours it should be completed by the chicken yes so, okay so the first thing that you are doing we are taking the water so that we can mix it with the we can mix it with the with the vaccine that is what you're doing you are taking the water and mixing it with the vaccine because the vaccine is in powder form after you have mixed it with the vaccine you shake it you shake it and make sure that all of that powdery stuff has, has dissolved after it has dissolved then you will take that vaccine using the syringe then you will inject it in the three liters of water that you will have been instructed to use for the 100 doses for our chicken which are 28 days guys here is my story of how i got a loss of 37 40 us dollars because of this newcastle disease you know the funny thing is that uh, when this disease attacked my farm i was not on the farm i was away where was i i was in the university studying my actuarial degree and imagine what i'm jobless do you know what the population of kenya we have around 2 million youth who are jobless. That is between the age of 20 years to 34 years. Imagine, and that is the age that most of us should be getting married or should be marrying. Imagine that. And most of them are jobless. So I think business is one thing that has really saved me from that end. And the funny thing, because the world as per now is going into a recession, I think there will be more rates of unemployment in the country like recently, like recently, I saw an article on the magazines, on the newspapers, whereby I saw that more than 100,000 people were going to lose their jobs because we have something known as a recession. I will talk about the effects of recession and inflation on agriculture on my coming videos. So guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Okay? So... This happened when I was back in the university, so I had left home. I had only left my chicken to my mom and uh, a shamba boy, or can I say a garden guy who usually, usually took care of my chicken. But the funny thing is that I had not vaccinated my chicken because I thought, oh, vaccines are just some things that uh, can happen and can't happen and can't cure my chicken or can't prevent my chicken from diseases. But I learned it the hard way. So these guys, they were like, I had never vaccinated my chicken and they were five months old. There were 500 of them. 
I was feeding my chicken. I had invested a lot of money in my chicken, all on feeds and some medications like the antibiotics. For example, some diseases like the salmonella, the typhoid, the cholera, and that had that all, all all of that hard work had gone in vain because when I was there, I had like we have we have today lost 40 chicken. Tomorrow they are telling me they have lost 70 chicken. Tomorrow they have told me they have lost 100 chicken. So imagine within a period of three to five days, I have lost over 500 chicken. Imagine that. So that is a very bad decision if you don't vaccinate your chicken. And make sure if you vaccinate your chicken, we have a schedule of vaccinating your chicks from day one uh, up to week eight. That is the best way you can vaccinate your chicken. For the Newcastle, we usually vaccinate them at day old, at day seven, and at day 28. The first thing that you have to know about the vaccines, you have to try and change the strains that you're vaccinating your chicks, your chicks with. The first strain you can vaccinate your chicks with is the F strain, the B1 strain, and also we have the Lasota strain. So make sure those are the live vaccines. Make sure you try and change the vaccination strains when you're vaccinating your chicken. Don't just use one strain. Like for example, you're using Lasota, Lasota, Lasota. Make sure you try and change it so that it can help the chicken body to try and adapt to the various strains of that disease when it tries to arise in the chicken. Thank you. So what will you do when you have encountered such a case on your farm? We have a treat that will help those chicken come back to life before they are gone forever. So what I usually do, I have these five, six magical components that I usually use. The plants, these things that were given to us by God. The six, they were given to us by God. So I will start by, we have lemons, we have garlic, ginger, rosemary, aloe vera, and oregano. Oregano or pepper. So those are seven, seven-ish. But in case if you don't have oregano, you can use, you can use pepper. So the first one I've said, you have lemons, garlic, ginger rosemary aloe vera then pepper or oregano so these are the measurements the lemon we have 300 ml the garlic we have 50 grams ginger we have 50 grams rosemary 50 grams aloe vera 100 grams then we have the oregano or pepper the red pepper 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 whatever two tablespoons so what you do you mix all of it together after you have mixed it all of it together that i mean you blend it together if you have a blender that is after you have blended it together make sure you are giving to your chicken using a teaspoon or a syringe don't put in water because when you put in water this chicken they have loss of appetite so they don't have thirst so they won't be able to access the water so they will die so what you have to do you have to take that mixture and put it directly in the mouth of that chicken and give it some just some small feed that pepper will help to increase the appetite for the food and the th other thing the garlic the ginger and the other lemons they are have antimicrobial they have antiviral antifungal they have very many components that are very natural so you have to add all of them then when you have crushed them and you have given them to your chicken Make sure you give them to your chicken every day, every day, till the signs and the symptoms of the disease have started to disappear. That's when you can stop. When they have started eating very well, they have started drinking the water, that is when you can stop. But you can also put a water, some water on the side. But guys, don't use the antibiotics like the antibiotics that you usually buy from the agrovet to treat a viral disease. Antibiotics can only treat bacterial infections, guys. Don't use the antibiotics to treat diseases like newcastle when you see just a green poop guys that is newcastle it has this color i will show you this very dark green color with some white strip on it so guys be open-minded <laughs>